As of now, in our discussion on the relationship between electricity and magnetism, we discussed two types of laws. We spoke about Ampere's law and be it Savar law. So these laws essentially describe the magnetic field that is produced as a result of an electric current moving inside a conducting wire. That is, we were able to show that whenever an electric current is moving in inside a conducting wire, it will produce a magnetic field around that wire whose direction is given by right hand rule number one. Now is the opposite true? Can a magnetic field that is present around a wire induce an electric current inside that wire? So. Once again, we saw that an electric current moving inside a conducting wire will produce a magnetic field around that wire. But, can a magnetic field induce an electric current inside a conducting wire? Now, to answer this question, we're going to examine the following experiment that was actually conducted by an English scientist by the name of Michael Faraday. So Michael Faraday conducted the following experiment to try to answer this question. In other words, can a magnetic field induce an electric current inside a conducting wire? So. Let's suppose we have the following two conducting wires. Wire number one that is connected to a battery to a voltage difference. And let's examine wire number two which does not have a battery but it has a galvanometer. A galvanometer is essentially a device that is able to detect an electric current. So, this I-ring ring essentially is connected to wire number one and to wire number two and we use this ring of iron to essentially magnify the magnetic field that is produced by the electric current moving in wire number one. So, when the battery is connected to wire number one, an electric current begins to flow through wire number one from the positive electrode to the negative electrode. Now, this moving electric current will create a magnetic field and the iron ring will act to magnify this magnetic field. So this electric current moving through wire number one will induce a magnetic field in this region. This iron ring will, will act to magnify that magnetic field and wire number two should feel that magnetic field. Now, if a magnetic field does in fact induce an electric current, then that implies that an electric current will begin to flow through wire number two and our galvanometer will be able to pick up that electric current. So, once again, if a magnetic field does in fact generate an electric current, wire number two will begin to carry a current which can be detected by the galvanometer. So what were the actual results of this experiment? So let's look at the following two important points. So. A steady electric current, in other words, a direct current, produces a constant magnetic field. Such a magnetic field does not induce an electric current in wire number two. In other words, once we actually connect our battery to wire number two and we wait until our current becomes a direct current, until our current is a steady or constant current, that constant current will produce a constant magnetic field. And that constant magnetic field will not be able to induce an electric current inside wire number two. So this galvanometer will not read any electric electric current. Now let's move on to point number two. At the moment that we connect or disconnect our battery from wire number one, we see that an electric current is produced that changes, that is not constant. And this non-constant electric current produces a non-constant or a non-uniform magnetic field. And we see that a non-uniform magnetic field will in fact produce an electric current which will 
will be picked up by our galvanometer. So once again, at the moment we connect, disconnect, the battery, a current is produced that changes. This in turn creates a changing magnetic field that does induce an electric current in wire number two. And this process of induction is known as electromagnetic induction. So what exactly is our conclusion from this experiment which was conducted by Michael Faraday? So, we see that only a changing magnetic field, a non-uniform magnetic field, can induce an electric current. A uniform or a constant magnetic field that is produced when we have a constant electric current does not induce an electric current. So, electromagnetic induction is essentially the process by which we induce an EMF, an electric potential difference, using a changing magnetic field.